Yeah. That is uh, quite the experience there, bud. Yeah. All this is going to disappear today. So before we get into this video, we need to clarify a few of the what's and the why's because whenever I post these videos, the comments always have uh, quite a few people go pretty far off the rails with some false uh, ideas of what's actually happening here. So first of all, we are not kicking out or removing anyone from the area. We're not taking anyone's homes away, anything like that. All the sites you see us clean up are sites that have been long since abandoned on their own. We have nothing to do with that. We're just cleaning up what was left behind. Everything's tagged and given well proper notice and before any of these events happen, uh, law enforcement, the organizers, the Forest Service, everyone goes out and lets everyone who is living in these areas know that these events are happening and this cleanup's about to take place. It's no surprise to anyone. The vehicles that are out there, all the vehicles are same thing. Long abandoned vehicles have been sitting there for a very long time. They're given the proper tags and notices. They're hauled off to a storage area where they go through the proper DMV lean process before they're eventually hauled off for scrap. The sites you see us clean up, I know we're back in the same area out China Hat Road that you've seen over and over again, and it seems like we're just cleaning up the same spot. It's getting trashed, we're cleaning it up again, and that's not exactly what's happening. Uh, we're in the same area, yes, but we're cleaning up different sites. Since we're not removing anyone, when we go in there, as you'll notice in this video, there are sites that we don't touch. Those are sites that are currently inhabited or recently inhabited, might still be. We leave them alone. We make those people aware of the event coming up before we ever go out there. We don't touch those. So as more and more sites become abandoned and vacated, there's more and more for us to go back in and clean up. That's why we're back in the same area, but we're not necessarily cleaning up the same sites over and over again. And speaking of the people who are out there, not everyone out there is trashing the area and living like that. I know that's what you see because that's what we're cleaning up, but there's a good number of people out there who are the down on their luck, trying to get by types, work a job in town, are really trying, they keep their sites clean, organized, they're not trashing anything, they're not bothering anyone, and we're all for those people. We don't, we're not trying to get those people kicked out of there, anything like that. In fact, a lot of them are actually out helping with the cleanup because they don't want the forest trashed either. They don't want the area shut down either. They're wanting the same thing as we are where this all stays open and usable. They're just trying to get by, and we have absolutely nothing against those people and do what we can to help them. Unfortunately, there's the other hand of people out there that are not just trying to get by. They are very willingly choosing the life they're living, and especially in that area because it is such an unregulated area. So what is the ultimate solution? I don't know. We're, we're not there. I think a huge start that needs to happen from the political level all the way down is we need to stop putting all these people in one category as the homeless or whatever you want to call it. It's not that. There are such very different categories of people out there. There's the down on their luck people trying to get by. There's the absolute career criminals who are using that unregulated area to continue what they're doing. There's the drug addicts. There's the uh, people with mental issues. The problem is you can't solve all these different issues when you just label it as only one. So that, that's a big start that I think needs to happen. And kind of from talking to people out there, they feel the same. But on the higher political level, it's above anything any of us can do. That's not how it's being handled. So all we're doing is trying to keep these public lands open. Because if they get shut down to us for recreation, they also get shut down to everyone living out there and using the areas, including the people who are really trying to get by, and they're out too. So none of us want that to happen. The whole point of these cleanups is to prevent that from happening. And while we don't have the ultimate solution and aren't going to figure it out out here on these cleanup days, we're going to do what we can to keep our lands open for as long as we can. One more thing real quick before we get into the video. Uh, a lot of times on these videos, there's a lot of very political comments and those turn into political arguments in the comments and end up getting deleted and getting people blocked from commenting on this channel ever again. So if you have anything like that to say, Take the effort you're going to put into writing that comment here and write it to your local, your state, and your federal representatives. That's where it will actually do some good because starting political comments here on this channel where I do not want it to get political at all is just going to get you blocked from commenting here again. So anything along those lines, 
send that to the people that actually needs to be sent to, not here. Marked, there is markers in crew leader bins. I get notified, I deal with that, that's hazmat. Minor stuff can be bagged, we have sharps containers. Red proper sharps containers. If you don't know what a sharp is, it is a needle typically. There are other sharp things, so that's why we wear gloves. So we are at the first uh, PLS Bend uh, public lands cleanup of the year out here at China Hat Road. I'm carrying some bags over. Uh, we got a whole crew out here getting some of the trash that has blown across the woods from all these uh, camps over here that are now uh, vacated and abandoned. So they're working on getting all this cleaned up. We're gonna move over here. I think we got about 150 volunteers out here today in seven different groups. Uh, a bunch of us came out yesterday and removed all the vehicles that we were able to remove ahead of time on this. And now it is trash day. You see, we've got skid steers coming in. We've got a whole bunch of dump trailers here. Like I said, 150 volunteers. World famous YouTubers over there. And uh, we're gonna get some stuff done today. Even Wes is here. I'm here and I'm ready to camp. <laughs> so this is Jeremy. Howdy guys. He's one of the head guys of PLS. Head guys. Tell That's people saying, tell people things about what, what we're doing? Yeah. Well, we're out here today. Uh, unfortunately, our forests have been getting a little pretty trashed. It's been a mess. Uh, well, that's neither here than there. We're just here to make a difference and uh, clean them up. We're trying to keep land open long enough to find an actual solution. Throughout the country, we've been seeing things get shut down due to these issues. So we've got a ton of volunteers out here today, heavy equipment, companies coming out, and we're uh, going to pick up the trash, and hopefully we'll uh, find a real solution to it soon. But for now, we'll band-aid it. Yeah. Make it happen. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but this is a beautiful area to come out and camp and enjoy the woods. And by the end of the day, you'll see why. So uh, we're going to show what's going on, show how all this is getting done, and then show you the results afterwards. Here we have the crouching YouTuber sneaking around the woods, trying to find unsuspecting people to film. <laughs> Sneaking up on it, end up like I did Casey earlier. I know, I just turn around, a guy's got a camera in my face. Who does that to people? here right here is actually pretty cool and it's got a skeleton bucket on it there's no floor to the bucket on this it's just ribs like the skeleton and it picks up a lot of the debris and trash and lets the dirt fall through so we're not scooping up too much of the dirt it's honking it's got a horn too So why are you not cleaning up trash, Casey? So, I tried to bring my dump trailer out here and was told to leave my trailer at home and bring my camera instead because my camera was going to do more for this event than my dump trailer was going to. What? All right, I just had a conversation with Jason from Primal Outdoors because we both feel the same way about this. Um, we both feel like total bums and jackasses walking around filming other people work while not working ourselves and uh, neither one of us like like that we want to just like put these cameras away and help because we love this whole idea of this project and these public lands just as much as anyone else um, and it's hard to not jump in and help clean up with this but um, the reality of it is we we can do more to make a difference here with these cameras than we can with our hands cleaning up. Um, it's like this, all this here is going away, by the way. So I'm walking over here to film to show you guys this, uh, the before, that way I can show you the after. But um, spreading the message about what we're doing here, spreading the word about this organization and, and the people coming out and volunteering is doing a lot more for these events than I could being one more volunteer helping out here and 
uh, the guys that run PLS, who obviously I work very closely with, said the same thing of like, the best thing you can do to help this is spread the word about it. So uh, they also reminded me that yesterday I did bring my roll back out here and do a whole bunch of like work all day long. So there's that. Oh, look at this one's all burned up here. Let's go check that out. But um, yeah, I, I feel like a total bum not having a trash bag and cleaning it up like everyone else is and just filming, but, but I also get the importance of getting the word spread um, to get more donations, more volunteers, more help, more awareness of all this. So, man, this is nuts. Look at this. All this is going to disappear today. So yeah, kind of like a moral conundrum for me, but uh, Jason feels the same way. He's he's over there filming as well, and we're both like, I want to just jump in and do something, but in all reality, this is doing more than we can do. Here comes Troy. See that truck right there? Uh, remember that truck, because it's not going to look like that for very long. It's about to turn into something really cool. Well, not like today, but like soon. So look at this right here. We've got Troy's off-road recovery, Taylor Northwest Construction, commercial powder coating. There's three businesses right there who have their equipment out here uh, today helping out. So there's lots of businesses involved in this that are really helping out to make a big difference. Morning, Troy. Morning. How's it going? Good. Another day. So what, another week or so this will be finished? Maybe. We'll see. So this here was a makeshift cabin you see out of uh, pallets and car cover and other random wood and when they moved on they just left it all here. There's a camper trailer right there that burned up and got left. Look in here. Look at the paint cans and um, fake money, <laughs> bicycle parts, like they just burned everything, plastic, the sign in front says take your shoes off before you go in. So make sure you clean your tracks before you go running through it. Get the hose, portable water. Did you go in there and smell that? Oh, I can smell that from out here. I don't need to go inside. I did. Oh, why'd you do that? Because curiosity is a terrible thing. That's also probably why it killed the cat. Oh, that's, uh, that is unique. There's a tent inside of there. Hey, it's a tent inside a tent. That's a bonus. Oops. There. That is uh, an instant tent inside of a not so instant tent. Uh, yeah, that is uh, quite the experience there, bud. Yeah. 
Huh. I, I don't remember what the story was with this, whether he went to jail or something, but he'd gone. It's good chocolate syrup if you want. Uh, right next to the lotion and a couple of rags. Okay, hey, let's awkward. go. I'm done. <laughs> Wes out here roaming around picking up all the bags. Just picking up something. Check this out here. We're like an hour into the day, and this whole area out here that had all this windblown trash across it is clean. There's these pallets right here that the skid steer is going to get, but this whole area out to the road that was just covered in all that stuff, cleaned up and done, and now that crew has moved on to uh, over there where that big RV was, that big nasty burned up RV and they're getting that all cleaned out. Skid steers are over there working on that. I'm gonna run down the road a little bit to where one of the other crews are working and show you what they're doing. They came over here to Cabin Butte. This here is Cabin Butte. It's a pretty popular shooting area. People come down here and set up targets and shoot. The problem is not, not most, but some just leave garbage and trash in here like crazy. It ends up up over the side of the butte over there when the wind swirls through here and the cardboard and all the stuff blows out. So this area here, it's a ton of small little trash and stuff that's been shot up and all that, but um, it's a good place for people to sign up if they have kids or uh, younger people because where you don't want them in those nasty homeless camp stuff and what ends up over there. Like this is a lot of garbage, but it's a very clean garbage compared to what's in the homeless camps. They've got... Um, snacks and waters and trash bags and uh, the pickers and all that stuff over there uh, for everyone and they're out here just cleaning up all the major stuff out here um, very very much appreciated this is one of kind of the the um the jobs that doesn't get nearly the credit it deserves like obviously the homeless camps are visually such a like a a massive night and day difference right off the bat that that's what looks like so substantial but this right here is is just as important as that and a good place to sign up for one of these groups if you've got kids or something like that and you don't want them around all that nasty stuff over there. All right, we're back over here to the main camp area. Look at the progress being made already. Uh, if you look over here, this was all just trash and already they've got all this knocked out working on that camp over there. This whole site right here was a whole tent site right here. They're just getting the last of that picked up. This one is that one we went in earlier. They've got everything around it and you're picked up. And as soon as the next dump trailer gets back, they can wipe out that, load it up. This will get cleaned out. Like They are rocking and rolling, making some huge progress. So as you can see here, they're separating out the metal the propane tanks, any of the batteries or hazardous stuff is all being separated so it can be recycled. Tires being separated, all that will go separately uh, to get recycled. And then the trash itself is what ends up in the dump trailers to go to the landfill. So that's an excavator job right there. You do not want to dig in that. So this skidster here has got the skeleton bucket on it to sift the material out. That one over there has got the normal smooth bucket on it so it can actually scoop up any of the contaminated dirt junk type stuff. Because uh, the idea is to not dig up any more dirt than we have to, but in some of the places like where that uh, big RV was over there, you do have to. Look at that, Max even gets to run the machines every once in a while. <laughs> But look at this right here. This is where that big old nasty burned up RV was sitting. A little bit more stuff to rake up. Got the scrap metal and tires over there. They gotta go separate, but all that garbage that was right here, gone. I'll put a cut in right here of what this looked like when that RV was sitting there. Huge difference, huge improvement. And we're just a couple hours in and other than a little bit of raking left over, this site is a world of difference. Awesome.
You think these eggs are still good? Okay. Two dozen eggs here. That's like ten dollars, isn't it, these days? Yeah. <laughs> Check out how this thing works like a rake. Just raking all that right out and leaving most of the dirt. Those two more pickup loads. Dump trailer there. Look at West go. I guess we're heading out of here. This stuff here is some hazmat and a few other things that uh, some of the crew later will come back to clean that up and dispose of it much more properly. We don't throw that stuff in with all the trash and having the volunteers clean that up. So that tent that we went in earlier, all this left, some painted rocks. All of this gone here. Oh, and a bike lock, but Graham's got the solution. Uh, which one do we cut to? The hardened part? Did we cut the right side? Well, that was quick. Dude, those border bands are money. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. You turn it over so the paint's not sticking up. Yes, it doesn't look like too sore. But... That does look better. <laughs> Graham is the problem solver of the group. I don't haul off the rocks, but you just turn them over. But out of all the tents that were in this whole stretch right here, gone. Okay, the cleanup is officially over, but uh, Wes, Troy, Jeremy, Trevor was running around here on a skid steer. A few others were all kind of still out here. Um, stuff like the metal, the propane tanks, the tires, all that, uh, getting that cleaned up and out of here. Most everyone else headed back to Powerline Road down there where uh, I think it's Boneyard Brewery uh, donated some beer. And uh, I can't remember if they have burritos there or not, but everyone's kind of down there for the final meetup. Um, except for the stragglers out here doing the last little bit and getting it out of here, but that's got to go. A little bit of metal, a couple of propane tanks, and some hazmat stuff. Troy, a lot of stuff happened today. Yes, we have almost 40,000 pounds of trash out. 40,000 pounds of trash is what we said? That's unofficial. Unofficial. So unofficially, so far, and there's still trailers headed out there, 40,000 pounds of trash, and that's not counting all the dumpsters. No, not even that. There's, what, five dumpsters? Four dumpsters overflowing. Four dumpsters completely overflowing. And uh, 
40,000 pounds of trash already to the dump. And probably 5,000 in recyclable metal, maybe. Yeah. And then 37 vehicles yesterday. So a lot got accomplished out here today and yesterday. So I think that is going to be it for this video today. Huge thank you to all the volunteers who came out, everyone who came out and helped, the people who've donated at plsbend.org and help make all this happen. The businesses that donated equipment, time, materials, everyone involved, just thank you. So if uh, you wanna get involved and help out, check out plsbend.org. We've got more cleanups coming up uh, later this year. There's definitely a lot more to do and uh, not stopping anytime soon.